Welcome back YouTube. Today what we're going to do is we're going to change the oil in my 2018 Subaru Outback. This is the 2.5 four-cylinder model. Uh, we're going to do <clears throat> synthetic oil change and I'll just go over how I do this, okay? I've been changing my own oil since I started driving and uh, this car is, is pretty easy to do an oil change on. So let's take a look at, at some of the tools that we're going to use. <clears throat> if you still use your uh, oil plug you're going to need a 14 millimeter socket and you're going to need a new crush gasket okay you're supposed to change these every time get these at the subaru dealer here's a new one that's the part number okay um, i chose to eliminate this drain plug for a couple reasons these strip really easily as you can see this one started stripping after about the second oil change this happens for two reasons. One, <clears throat> when they assemble the car, they put this plug in and then they paint um, the oil pan in the bolt. So you have to break loose that paint the first time you change this oil. Secondly, I don't know if you can tell or not, but this bolt actually starts to taper as soon as it comes off the shoulder. So if you are not on here perfectly square, what's gonna happen is even if you're off a, a degree or two, you, um, it's gonna wanna strip. And you can see it started to strip um, this is the first time I've ever seen this with a vehicle. All my other vehicles had just regular drain, drain bolts. So, <clears throat> drain pan plugs. So there's a few things you can do. You can get another one of these. You can get an aftermarket one, or you can install a Fumoto valve. And that's what I did. It's a quick release valve. I'll go over that once I'm under the car. It makes changing oil extremely easy. All right, next up, you're gonna need either a filter cap wrench like this or a pair of pliers or an oil filter pliers. I just use these. It's much easier. Um, I collected, uh, you know, a handful of these over the years. Oil filter. I like Napa Gold, which is Wix, part number 755, 7055. I've always had good luck with these. If you didn't want to use this, I would say use the OEM. Stay away from, you know, uh, like a frame or cheap filter spend a few extra dollars and get yourself a good filter <clears throat> okay oil i use pens oil uh, platinum zero w20 that's what it calls for as far as weight goes um, this is a synthetic oil change to be honest with you you can you could go to the store and get any synthetic oil you want it would be fine i changed somewhere between five and six thousand miles you can get into a rabbit's hole looking at those oil forums not needed um, just go to the store whatever they have um, I did read some forums and they said, hey, um, used oil results say Penzo Platinum is really good. So that's why I'm using that. A um, few oil changes ago, they were out of this. So I used Castro Edge, saw no difference whatsoever. So that's fine. Um, it just so happens my wife's RAV4, I run Mobile One. So uh, this car gets the Penzo oil. Okay, let's go underneath the car and uh, I'll show you how to drain uh, the oil. Okay, before we crawl under the car, just wanted to show you, I use jack stands. You can use ramps if you want. I don't have a set of ramps. Um, and then my jack stands, I put under the frame rail. I don't like to use the pinch welds on the sides of the car. Um, just makes me feel a, a little bit more secure using, using the jack stands. There is a good jacking point right here. Um, if you look at the service manual, uh, this, is, this is where they want you to jack up the front of the car. And you can do the whole car um, the whole front end just from this point okay so let's take a look at this valve all right so excuse me there's your fumoto valve okay um a lot of people use these i wouldn't recommend them on a vehicle that has a, a pretty exposed oil pan but this oil pan stuck up here pretty good, so um, it, it, it's out of the way. My wife's car, like I said, it's a RAV4, and, and the oil plug sticks out right at the bottom, so I would not recommend it for that, but <clears throat> this is tucked up there pretty good. Um, they make a lot of different versions. <clears throat> this version has um, the, the nipple that you can put the hose on it, okay? Um, I haven't used it. I just drain it right into the pan. And there's just a spring-loaded lever on the side here. And what you do is there's a lock clip right here. And you take this lock clip out, okay? And then you just 
move the lever, turn it, and the oil will start to drain. All right. Let me get my pan underneath here. All right. And that's it. Okay. It's easy as that. Um, strain it into the pan. Some guys say, oh, it takes too long to drain. It, it takes like an extra 20, 30 seconds. So, um, so let's go ahead up. While this is draining, we'll take care of the oil filter. Okay. Now it's time to take care of the oil filter. What we're going to do is we're going to loosen the fill cap here, put it up out of the way. You could actually remove it first step, and that's going to help the oil drain a little bit. Oil's still draining. Okay. And the key to this is, you know, all right, Subaru is nice because it has the, the, um, the filter up top. It makes it easy to get to. But what will happen is as you take it off, oil is going to run down into here. So what you want to do is unscrew it and flip it upside down as fast as possible. And that's going to be um, less mess for you. All right. All right, so here we go. We got that cracked loose. Spin it. Flip it upside down. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a rag then. We're going to clean up all that extra oil. It's less messy. And this oil had about 5,000 miles on it before I decided to change it. The weather's nice today, so... All right, so you don't have to get it all off. Just make sure you get most of it out. <clears throat> we have our new oil filter here. There is oil on the gasket. Use nice, fresh, new oil. Put a thin film. This will help seal it. Put your oil filter on. All right. And what I do, hand tight. That's it. That's all you need to do. All right. Two hands, hand tight. That's it. New filter is ready to go. Um, we're going to go ahead and then we'll put in 5.1 quarts of oil. <clears throat> you could put five in and call it a day, but, um, you know, I picked up an extra quart, so I get the big jug and then I add 0.1 from uh, the extra quart. So we'll go ahead and fill that. Before we fill, we're going to close the valve. Okay, wipe it clean. And what I use is when we built our son's play set, these little rubber caps, they go on the ends of the bolts so nobody gets hurt. And I had a few extra, so I just put that on there. Um, I think you can get them at the hardware store, they're like three eighths, um, just little vinyl caps, okay? And then what I'll do is I'll put my safety clip back on there and that's all there is to it. Okay, so there is our safety clip installed, and what I wanted to do was <clears throat> just show you, when you install these, the easiest thing to do is go to the store, get yourself a 19 millimeter crow foot um, piece for your socket, and you can just put it on like that. Hand tighten it, go about an eighth of a turn, that's what the instructions say, but this is probably the easiest way to go ahead and install it. So we're ready to go, we're going to put the 5.1 cords of oil in. Okay, so we have our 5.1 quarts of the Pennzoil 0W20 in. Make sure you always use a nice clean funnel. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put our cap on. We're going to start the car up, let it run for about five minutes, and then we're going to let it sit for about five, ten minutes, let the oil drain back down, and then we'll check the dipstick, make sure it's at the appropriate level. So hopefully you liked the video um, and you found it helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comment section. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I'd appreciate it. And we'll try to get some more videos out. Thanks.